Hello everyone, welcome to this demo session on SAP UI5 in Fiori training on Web IDE. By far you must have seen my demo videos on YouTube or probably on my website. In this demo session, we will see how to create a very simple UI5 based application. And I'll give you an overview of how our course is structured. Half of the demo, we will just look at the course content and a very simple cre creation of a UI5 app. The remaining 15, uh, 15 to 20 percent of the demo, I will take up your questions. I'm sure you guys all have lots of questions regarding the training about server access, about what you will cover. I'm in a vapor, I don't know anything. Would you be covering HTML and stuff like that? What would be the, the scope of the course? What is that will be covered, not covered? All these questions must be running in your mind. So we will be looking into these questions towards the end of the end of this session. So let's get started with this session. I will first brief you about this course, what will be covered as part of this course. So we can quickly see the whole course is divided into four phases. Basically, this course is designed by keeping in mind that you are a fresher. So if you think that you don't know anything, this course is for you. Because I don't treat you like an experienced. I will treat you like a fresher. So imagine you are just working in IT company into some project. I don't care which project you are into. Whether you have ABAP knowledge, don't have ABAP knowledge, that is also doesn't matter for us. We will start with the basic foundation for SAP UI5. In the first phase of this course, I will discuss about HTML5, CSS, JavaScript, and jQuery. We will talk about it in detail, how to create a simple HTML-based app. CSS and JavaScript is the main programming language. So many times I get questions about do I need to learn JavaScript? Answer is no. You don't need to know JavaScript, but you need to learn it. And I will cover everything what you need as part of this course. So you just come as a fresher and that's enough for me. You don't need to know anything at all. All the required foundation for this course will be covered as part of this course. In the next phase of the course, we will talk about SAP UI5 framework and controls. We will discuss about MVC architecture to be able to design our UI5 application. So what is MVC, Model View Controller Architecture to create a UI based application, why MVC? We will talk about different aspects of models like JSON, XML, resource and OData data models. We'll also discuss about different variety of views SAP offers like JSON, HTML, XML and JavaScript views. Majority of this course, we will focus on XML views because that's being the more standard way of creating the views. However, I will also showcase you the JavaScript view capabilities. In the third phase of the course, we will move on and talk about Fiori user experience with SAP.M library. Majority of the Fiori controls will be covered in this course. Along with that, there are concepts like scaffolding, formatters, fragments, reusable components, custom controls, Google Map integration, component.js, manifest.json, router, root match handler, new app.json, will be covered in this course. So you will find this completely unique in my course. No other trainer would probably see you covering these advanced topics in their courses. Finally, we will talk about what is OData service. So those who don't know what is OData, this course is for you. You are just fresh, fresher, or maybe you're working in a bar by far in the company, and you don't have a clue about what is this OData all about. Don't worry. We will discuss about what is an OData service, how to create an OData service, perform read-write operations to your existing ABAP system using OData service, and finally, the integration with UI5 and Fury application. The complete course is designed and uh, designed to be taught on 
ASAP Web IDE. Many times students ask me question about Anubhav. What do we do about system? Don't worry. I will demonstrate you what is the way to get the system access SAP Web ID personal edition, which is a trial version, absolutely free to be executed in your local system by setting it up in your local system. So we will see that how to set up SAP Web ID as part of this course. So you don't, as I told you, don't need to know anything. Uh, you are a fresher for me, just pass out of college. That's it. There is no other system requirement as well. There is no other learning requirement as well when it comes to my course. I expect you to know nothing. Okay. Nothing, guys. Nothing. You just are a fresher for me and I will ramp you up for everything, including installation of the required tools to be able to work with SAP UI5. Okay. So that will be the flow. Quickly looking to the timelines of this particular course. Saheli is asking, will you also be covering extension scenario? No, Saheli. Extension scenario is covered in my advanced Fury training. In this course, we will more focus on this detail. If you want to get into the detailed course content, please go to my website, onlinefurytrainings.com and you can download the course content from here. And you can see in detail what will be covered. So here you will find the detail about what will be covered. You can see the couple of logos on the top, which you are familiar with. And maybe coming down, you can see the detailed course content is already available. You can download and go through it and understand what is that which we will be covering. Okay. So that is, that is something is available. You can download and check it if it meets your expectation. As I mentioned, this course is mainly for the people who are going to get involved into UI5 Fury project in near future or already working in UI5 project, but unable to understand the concepts like component JS, what is a view, how do we code, what is a control hierarchy, what is a UI5 SDK, what is binding, all these things which you're confused with. So we will be discussing them all in detail. This is the first step towards new technology. That's why I always say people who want to learn S4 HANA technical or a BAP on HANA from me, I would say go with SAP UI5 Fury training. That's a first step towards learning, guys. And then maybe move on to the next one, advanced learning, where you will learn Fury security concepts, extensions, extending OData services, changing standard Fury applications, integration with Launchpad theme designer, Launchpad designer, role concept, catalogs and groups, KPI tiles, all these things in detail are covered in my advanced course. And the next level is ABAP on HANA. How do you go to the data paradigm and create analytical apps on top of S4 HANA? That's a completely new level. Again, for ABAPers, those who want to work on a BAP backend with OData, CDS views, AMDPs, ADBCs, to be able to work on S4 HANA and ABAP on HANA. So that's the next module. However, you can also build complete application on top of SAP HANA DB, which is called Native HANA Application Development. That's also a new course which I've recently launched. So you can see what courses are available and then decide based on what is your expectation. For each of the course, the course content is available. You can download and see. But if you don't know anything, there is nobody there to guide you what to do, where to go. I would say blindly start with this one. This is the starting point for new technology. Okay. If there is nobody today to guide you guys, this is the starting point for you. You don't understand what's going on around you. Start with this course. You will get a complete comprehensive understanding what's going on around you. Okay. So let's go ahead and now talk about SAP UI5. So typically whenever we develop any program or be it in a C programming or a Java programming or in a BAP programming. What we always start in a program is for the user. We need to typically have a user interface where we can take input output. We have a processing logic which gets processed and we have the data. So whenever we want to start a program, the typical flow of a program goes like this. We have to first do initialization. 
In the step number one, initialization, we will do all our variable declaration. We want to do all our initialization of variable values, values to be assigned. All that will be done at the part of initialization step. All the loading of dependencies. Suppose you are writing in a bar program, it has some independency on type pools or include program, you got to load the dependency at the beginning. That's what the initialization does. In the next step of the program, you would start with your actual coding. So you will here write your processing logic to be able to do some processing. And sometimes if the program also has a user interface, you're gonna write the code to be able to design your UI. So place your UI elements. So you got to design your UI elements. Basically you got to design the screen elements so that what users see. And when user interact with your application, there is a processing logic where you will write all the processing logic to handle validations, read inputs, manipulate data, access database, and display the results. That's I would say next step. So this is what you do in all processing and orchestration logic, navigation between different screen. This is all your processing logic is. And finally, you will display the output. Right? This is typical process of any program which you write in any programming language. Now, similar to this, what we exactly have here in SAP UI5 is also the same steps. Okay? So, what we exactly do, we first have to do initialization. So, as part of initialization in SAP UI5, we have to load something called SAP UI5 framework. Now, when it comes to this word called framework, what is this word called framework means? Many times we hear this word framework, framework, framework. Lot of people are talking framework, framework, framework. What exactly the framework means? So, in interview, if somebody asks you framework, what should be your answer? A framework is a collection of libraries. Is a collection of libraries these each of these libraries includes classes and each of these class includes methods to fulfill certain task so suppose you want to do a multiplication operation so rather than you yourself writing the code for multiplication you can probably use a library like math function library uh, like a like a you know manipulation library it has a math class and that math class has a method for multiplication so such group of functions mathematical functions if i include all of them together it becomes a library of math functions and similar to this, if I include, let's say, string functions, mathematical functions, uh, manipulation, integer manipulation functions, um, calculating the area of uh, area of uh, different shapes like circle, diagonal, or uh, circle, uh, square, and all that, all of the, these small small libraries together, together in a framework, and this framework I can deliver to anybody. Who can also reuse leverage the power of what i i had created okay and that's what exactly ui5 framework is it's a collection of libraries which allows you to make use of its classes to be able to develop a responsive web application so the definition of sap ui5 framework sap ui5 is a framework which allows, which is based on 
open standards like HTML5, CSS, JavaScript, jQuery, and there are many more like Ajax, LESS, D3, DataJS, multiple open standards, open source frameworks for which no licensing fee is required to be given to anybody. That's the base of SAP UI5 framework. So it's a framework based on open standards to be able to build responsive web application. Okay. Now what do I mean by responsive web application? Responsive means an application which can adapt itself according to device. This is a world of mobile devices where you, you want to write application only once, one single code. And when you run the same application in mobile or a tablet or a desktop, you would realize that it all looks consistent. You don't have to write separate code for mobile, separate code for tablet and separate code for desktop. It's a responsive web application. And that's what we do with UI5. It's a new UI technology. Talking about the UI technology, the evolution of UI technologies in SAP. We have first was SAP GUI. It's a typical SAP GUI based transactions you, might, you might have already worked with if you are in SAP since long time. Like VA01, ME21N, MM01, stuff like that. These are typical SAP GUI transactions. After that, with the with a web-based web application development, there were two technologies introduced by SAP. One was WebDIN Pro and another was BSP, Business Server Pages. WebDIN Pro was again available in two flavors, WebDIN Pro for Java and WebDIN Pro for ABAP. And then finally, we have come up with, in the era of, in 21st century, an era of SAP UI5. So this is how overall your, the front-end layer is evolved over a period of time. Now comparing, this is a very often interview question where which people will ask you, why SAP UI5 over WebDIN Pro? Why don't we use WebDIN Pro or BSP? In this course, I will not just cover the technicalities of UI5 and development, or development approaches, but I will also cover all the important interview questions. It will make it so easy for you to crack any interview in UI5 and Fury. We will discuss all these intricacies behind the scenes, why people are switching to SAP UI5 technology, what is Fury, what is the difference between UI5 and HTML5. Very good interview question. Many times we confuse between UI5 and HTML5. What is the difference between these two? Yeah, very often you see your colleagues talking to you and you guys are confused. Some people saying HTML5, some saying UI5, some saying Fiori. What is the difference between UI5 and Fiori? These questions always come and tickle in our mind, but we don't get a concrete answer from someone. I'm here to solve your problems. Don't worry. We'll look into the, all these open questions from your side during the course. And I will try my best to answer everything and write it down everything in the PPT like this so that you can go ahead and remember it forever. Okay. This is what we will be doing. Now, a couple of points to note why we use SAP UI5 over WebDIN Pro. The point one is it's based on open standards, which means it is very much compatible with the modern browsers, open standards like JavaScript programming language. In the JavaScript programming language, guys, I'm getting into this answer just because right now I want to discuss it, but more in detail, we will again discuss this question as and when we will progress. There is a lot to learn during this course. In the next 40 to 45 hours, I'm gonna give you a lot of information which will be very helpful for you to get a depth understanding of it. However, just a couple of advantages. Point one, it's responsive. You can run this application on tablet, on mobile device, without any additional coding. Point two, it's based on open standards. So you don't have to pay any extra licensing fee. There is another version of UI5 called Open UI5, which is an open source. If you want, if you're looking for a UI technology in modern for modern browsers and modern world, 
Open UI 5 could be one of the choice where you don't have to pay any licensing fee to anybody. It's free. Point three, if there is something which is not supported by the framework, you can design and develop it yourself. The framework is so extensible that it allows you to build your own controls, your custom controls, or you can extend a standard control as well. However, on WebDIN Pro, you can't do that. Since it's based on open standards, you can also make use of browser backend. Just to give you a little, small example, you can see this browser back and forth button. Anybody, those who worked with WebDIN Pro, you must know, is this back button of the browser supported by WebDIN Pro? Can you navigate back and forth in WebDIN Pro using this back and forward button? Yes, you cannot. But in UI5, you can. Yeah, This is one simple difference you can make out which makes UI5 on the top of the chart a great UI technology. It doesn't become a bottleneck for developers, guys. SAP UI5 doesn't become a bottleneck for developers. You want to style your application in your own way. Maybe you're working, let's say, for a big brand, and your brand is all in red color. And you want to give your website, your app, everything in red color look. In WebDIN Pro, probably, possibly not today possible much of doing customizing. I'm talking about typical conventional above WebDIN Pro. However, here you have a concept of theme designer. You can apply custom CSS to be able to change the look and feel of your application based on your need. Yeah, These are a couple of advantages which makes the UI5 a better UI technology as compared to the others. Okay. So hope you got some feel, but yet in detail we will discuss as and when we will progress with each and every topic in inside of this UI5 and Fury. Okay. So now the first step which we need to do is to load this framework to be able to create our first application. We must load the framework. And where can we load this framework? There are two ways. One you can load from your local computer. And second way is to load directly from internet. Okay. Load from your local computer or load it from internet. So if you want to load this framework, you have to write a special statement. Okay. You have to write a special statement to be able to load the framework inside of your application, inside of your page. So always, whenever we start, we actually start with an HTML file. Okay. We call this file as index.html. This is the starting point when you create. Imagine this is equivalent to writing your first ABAP app program in AC38. This is what we always start with. A typical HTML file has two parts of it. One is called header, which is the brain of HTML. And another part is called body, which is the skeleton or actual content of HTML. That's called body of HTML. So you have header and the body of HTML. That's what exactly you will have it when it comes to a index HTML file. As I mentioned, header is the brain of HTML and body is the, the content what you want to display to the user. Okay. Now, if I go inside in the header, here is where I will be writing my initialization code to be able to load SAP UI5 framework and currently for the demo purpose I will be loading directly it from internet so I will be going and calling one URL and this is called CDN content delivery network which is provided by Akamai okay what is Akamai what is CDN all these things we will discuss in detail but imagine right now I've got to initialize SAP UI5 framework in my program i got to load or i got to initialize things load dependency as part of my file so let's get started with our first index html file and try and load sap ui5 framework as part of it now since it's an initialization it will be called at the beginning of application when your application starts at that point of time this will be called we call it as bootstrap. Just like when you start your computer, it's called booting process. Here we call it as bootstrap. 
So it's a piece of code which gets executed before your actual application starts. It's called bootstrap, okay? Bootstrap, which means loading, initialization of your UI5 framework as part of your file. So we will be using throughout our course the Web IDE development environment. And Web IDE development environment for trial version for developer is free. I will show you how to set up your Web IDE environment yourself. This is what we'll be covering in our first class, guys. In our very first session, we will be covering that how to set up your Web IDE environment in your local computer absolutely free. Okay. So many of the time you ask me question about what about system access? It's free. Our 90% of the course is based on SAP Web IDE. And OData part, we I will also show you how to use a free server provided by SAP called ES5 for OData scenarios. And only for 10% part, you need a server access for which I will guide you what are all the different options. So 90% of the course don't even worry about server access. It's all my duty. It's my tension. It's not your tension. Today, the problem is you see a lot of material on internet, but it is not organized. There is no direction given to the material. You find it so difficult to follow through. You are unable to also make the right flow. What is the right flow of learning? Material is there on internet. In fact, a lot of good material is there, but you are unable to find the right flow, the right guidance, where to start, where to stop, what to follow, what to not follow. The important part is the standards. Today, you are able to create a UI5 app by following some training blocks on internet, but you don't get the confidence of what is the standard to follow. Because of that, you cannot certify that my application will pass through all the quality standards like code review. So if an expert reviews your code, you always have this fear in your mind that what will happen if somebody reviews my code, I will be sued, I will be thrown out of company because I've done a copy paste actually from somewhere to create this application and I'm not sure whether I've done it right or wrong. Because there is a lot of code in internet. People are copy pasting simply and creating it out. They are unable to somehow not know what is the right standard and right flow. And many times you get it into issues like somebody come and say, hey, your performance is bad. It's not working as, as expected. And why it's happening? Because you did a copy paste of somebody else's code. You don't know what that guy was meant to do. Maybe that guy was just trying to demonstrate the capability of UI. And he did not really take care of uh, handling the performance part, doing a paging part. I remember one of my students who came to me because of only worry he had. Anubhav, I know UI5 development. There's no problem about it. I'm able to also follow internet with a lot of things, but I don't know standards. It's very difficult to code with the right standard. So tomorrow when I get into the production, I should not get any issue. Yeah. So that was the doubt he was coming with. And after taking the training, he was so much satisfied. Now he knows everything, what each artifact is doing inside of a project. What does it mean? How to, uh, you know, he can understand a standard code also after looking into it. So we, our focus is, of course, interview questions, of course, the technology, of course, the UI controls, of course, every single topic which I have discussed, but also the standards. What is the standard? coding practices what are all the best practices you need to involve in your development so that tomorrow you don't have this fear of getting thrown out of a company because of something i see one of my student coded the ui5 application by following some internet tutorials and now he see that when they're trying to integrate with launchpad it doesn't work it doesn't work simply and then he is like what to do it's working in my local, but with Launchpad, it's not working. And basis guy is complaining, you only know about it, right? So these things, these problems you will see in your real world. Material is there today on internet. Lots of training material, training blogs, ready to use code snippet, but people are doing copy paste. And trainers, in fact, I sub I'm surprised to see majority of the trainers who are teaching today UI5 they're also doing copy paste. 
they will copy the code they will paste the code they will show you the output and that's how the training is over five ten minutes video and nicely they will say i taught you container i taught you modeling i taught you binding in five ten minutes they will finish off that video and that's how they try to complete and get rid of the responsibility of teaching right in this course i would not do a copy paste i will write every single line of code at front of you so that you can understand the meaning of every single line and i encourage and clearly guide and tell you that you should also not do a copy paste copy paste is the most pathetic way of writing your code this way you skip out important parts so never copy paste the code until you understand the concept once the concept is clear to you do copy paste to speed up your development so initial days of our course in fact till the end of this course you will observe that i am very much against the copy paste of code copy paste methodology will not work it is my personal experience the pain i have gone through learning these things i will not let you go through the same pain okay that's what i personally experienced that's why i started this and you see it's going quite well actually if you go to youtube so if you already have idea on ui5 fury you're doing it good no need to take my course you can go to my learning series directly recently started a new learning series on my website a lot of free content i'm giving to the, to you guys you can go ahead and go through this completely completely free but yet you need to have an experience on things you need to understand what is component.js you need to understand what is router or you need to understand what is binding types expression binding property binding aggregation binding you need to understand entity set how do they connect you need to understand paging concept you need to understand uh, you know formatters fragments object creation this pointer controllers scaffolding dependency management manifest.json new app.json yeah if you understand all this go through my learning series it will be a great help for you no need to come for my course you already an expert no need to come but if you want to start from scratch and understand every single standard understand every single bit of it from depth definitely you're most welcome to attend my course okay and things which i cannot cover in my course i am committed to deliver that and that's why i started anubhav learning series many people are getting benefited out of it things which sometimes we cannot touch upon on the course or things which are new in the market which are no nobody is covering i'm creating youtube videos continuously it's my promise using anubhav learning series to fulfill the gaps which you have after completing the course if something new comes some other question comes in your mind i am creating the anubhav learning series videos and giving it that's a complimentary for you guys after completing my course these videos are for you you can easily understand all these videos and do the coding end to end in your applic in your application in your company with standards and knowing every single line of code many times it happens people have copy pasted the code their output have come but when it reaches to production it is failing and now your manager sitting on your head and asking you what have you done bad quality i would say you don't even know what you have copy pasted you were just focusing on output and that's what is causing problem for you now never do copy paste until you understand and that's why i hope you are all here to understand line by line what's the meaning what's the standard what to do not to do important is what not to do and how to do this is what we will be looking into the course at least you got some idea with this demo what's going on behind the scene so let's get started create our first applications i'll quickly log into our web ide system i will show you installation and setup of this web ide don't panic don't think that anubhav you directly jump to web id how did this screen came don't worry it's part of your course i will show you it's just a demo so wanted to just quickly show it to you since it's just a demo so now let me just create here a new project a new folder and i will say demo and now in this i'm going to create my first file index.html and now as i mentioned there are two parts of an html page so i should start with the declaration of doc type that this document is actually an html document okay 
that's the first statement of an HTML document typically should be and then you start with the HTML tag and then after that you should have two parts one is the header of HTML which is the brain we will discuss about HTML basics again in our first chapter starting with HTML5 don't worry so right now just focus on the my teaching style my skill the way I'm communicating to you the way am I meet, going to meet your expectation you need to judge and then you need to decide whether I am the right person to whom you wish to continue okay that's what is important that's why this demo session so look at the technique don't worry about where this screen came from how did he install web ID all that I will discuss in detail starting our first class from Monday don't worry about it so right now I'll go ahead and now put here a bootstrapping code so in the header we are now going to do initialization so I'm gonna write some initialization code okay so we will be writing an initialization code so typically we should put comments like this okay that's a commented code in HTML and now let's write the initialization so we should say script tag and then we will put ID equals to SAP UI bootstrap and now I have to put the source from where this UI5 framework will be loaded okay this is what we have to put guys where is this initialization where is this framework it's because we are saying we are going to build using UI5 framework now you have to load the framework from somewhere and what is framework collection of libraries Will be coming to you which you can choose from so that's what you got to do now you have to put src now what is this whole thing is called anybody just now i told you the name of this whole thing what is this whole thing called what did we name this what was the name of this whole thing which we were writing what do you call this bootstrap, bootstrap. perfect answer so it's a bootstrap so we got to now see how to write a bootstrap to be able to load the ui5 framework from content delivery network so a quick Google would also help you to understand this so I can say SAP UI 5 bootstrap press enter and now you can see a couple of blocks over here and you can see some people are also asking what why is this code but now you know that it's basically initialization of your UI 5 framework I just go into the link and find out the path the URL where I can load the UI 5 framework there are two ways one is local one is from internet so we are right now going with the internet based way which is bootstrap from content delivery network this is the option we are going with again I say we never do a copy paste we write every single line of code and then you see now ID SAP UI bootstrap and then SRC from where it should be loaded so it's from SAP UI 5 HANA on demand.com resources slash UI 5 core JS so that's what we will be using that's the path on the internet from where this will be loaded so let's put HTTPS SAP UI 5 dot HANA dot on demand.com slash resources SAP UI core JS Now .js means it's a JavaScript file. What is a JavaScript? Why we use JavaScript? All that we will cover in detail in upcoming days. So that's the source from where it should be loaded. Now we have to also mention which library. Now as I mentioned, a framework is a collection of library. So would you load all the libraries? Do you need all the libraries of a framework all the time? If you do that, then your performance will go down. That's the reason we don't load all of them. We just load the library which we need right it will become slow if you load everything so I will say load this framework but just load certain library which I really need so I need an sap.m library sap.m stands for mobile m stands for mobile here so it's a mobile library which I'm going to load to be able to work with my first UI5 control so that's what I'm, I'm gonna do I'm gonna load sap.m library so you have to put data sap UI libs so data SAP UI libs library name and you can say now I want to load SAP M library so that's what you mentioned now what are all the different libraries how do they work what is the syntax what are all the controls they hold all that we will discuss in our unit number of, uh, 
11 where we will talk about ui5 sdk okay in that unit i will discuss about it in detail what are all the libraries available right now just focus this is our bootstrap so let's end this tag and that's your loading of framework guys clear everybody how do you load ui5 framework initialization of a program and this is called sap ui5 bootstrapping line by line step by step we will be discussing all the concepts line by line guys so that's my bootstrapping now now once this bootstrapping is done we got to write a script and script tag and now inside of this we are going to write a piece of code to be able to display something so what is the syntax to create a variable in abap so those who are abapper they can relate it much much easier because i'm myself an abapper and it took me some time to learn UI5 and the pain I've gone through, I will not let you go through the same pain because I will relate things. If you're already familiar with the BAP or Webdin Pro, I will relate these things with those concepts so that you can relate and work with it or any programming language for that matter. So in a BAP, we use data, LV matna, the variable name, type, MATNR. This is what we do in a BAP to create a variable. Here, we use a different syntax. We use var. and it's case sensitive so var b small your variable name equals to new keyword your library name dot class name as, as i mentioned library includes classes and that's what you got to do library name dot class name then along with this there are two properties which you have to pass in this uh, constructor of the class one is sid and one is s properties okay so what is sid sid is unique id of control your ui control and what is s properties it's the properties of a ui control example label value text width height enable visible right we have different properties when we design a user interface i want to give a label to a button so i use text property i want to do when somebody click on the button what should happen that's an event okay so we also pass the event name and action handler what should happen when you click on a button a method should get triggered a function should get triggered what should be what code should should we write in that so that's what your event is all about so let's create a very simple uh, uh, a control called button follow the syntax so syntax is var variable name equals to new new is a keyword here so let me highlight all the keywords in the bold letters so you understand what's a keyword and what's something you can give so let's go ahead and do that so i say var oh spider-man that's what i want to create a variable and then say new is the keyword and see web id is so beautiful it can automatically put all the keywords and very uh, and declaration types in a different color so you can make out what's a keyword what's not okay that's the beauty of sap web ide now in some companies they are not using web id they are using eclipse i have already created a video explaining why should we use web ide what is the advantage so you can go ahead and convince your management about why should we use web id over eclipse i've clearly noted down all the pros and cons of both the both the ides the preferred ide for development is web ide however i will also show you how to use eclipse development environment to do same thing because the code never change based on ide based on your development environment for example if you're writing a bab code if you write in ac38 or ac80 it doesn't change it remains same it's just the difference of uh, your ide your development environment right same thing here between web id and eclipse your code never changes it's just the development environment i will show you both of them in detail so that you can if you, you, your company is using eclipse then you can also use that so now comes is the library name sap.m is the library you can see we loaded this library already and i can say button control i want to create and now i can just put parenthesis curly braces and put here the text property for button and i can say uh, click me 
that's a button I want to create so that's about initialization and this is about creating your screen elements okay that's a step number two which we saw in a typical program so create your screen clear everybody what did we do creating our screen that's what we did this is step number two we are creating our screen actually we are inside a script tag so this will not be treated as comment so maybe we can just put double slash create your screen step two now in step three what do we do we got to now display this now remember one golden rule user will only see user will only see content which is placed inside body of HTML okay that's what user will always see so is this content placed in the body of HTML anybody do you think what we created is part of body of HTML no this is your body see it's empty currently your body of HTML is empty so we need to now take this control and tell the system that place this control in the body but to place it somewhere in the body you need a placeholder so let's create a placeholder we call it as a div tag what is a div tag I'll explain it in, in HTML unit which is the first unit of our course what is HTML5 there I will explain you and I'll name it this as content you can name it as anything you can name it as Superman and now I just save this so now what I'm do, gonna do is I will tell the system that whatever you created you're gonna place this content into the body of HTML so from here it has to go and sit inside this clear everybody this is what we will do then only user can see the content very important step so let's go ahead and do that so I will come here and say oh spiderman dot place at method now where is this method place at is coming from where can you see it um, how do you know that there are more methods like this method all that we will discuss in unit 11 where we will talk about UI5 SDK in detail and then I'll say it should be placed in Superman and we are done congratulations you have created your first UI5 application very nice let's execute it so I select this and say run and now you see a button getting displayed on the UI for you it doesn't really look like a UI5 application however but you can at least make out that this is a button which doesn't look like an HTML like button yeah it's been created now I want to give it a different look and feel I want to give it a look and feel of UI 5 a fury based application you might have seen some blue color screen and stuff like that so for that what I'm gonna do is I just add a class property class is called classification of this entire body should be classified as what I would say this whole body is classified as SAP UI body now the moment I do this and come back and refresh you see the screen uh, screen look and feel will change to blue color but right now not because I have to also specify which theme I would like to load okay which theme I would like to load so UI5 comes with different themes like Blee's theme is the recent one introduced with Fury 2.0 we have themes like high contrast theme for color blind people we have theme like blue crystal which is the most famous theme by far in the market so let's go ahead and tell the system that we want to load a theme as well theme means coloring look and feel just like in your Gmail account you can choose any theme to customize to personalize your screen in what color you want to see your Gmail account that's that's exactly the theme you are applying so same thing we, we can do it here we will just tell the system that we want to load a particular theme so data hyphen SAP hyphen UI hyphen theme equals to SAP underscore blue crystal and this is fixed guys you can't change it I mean you cannot put something like spider-man here that's something which SAP defines and you got to use it however there's something called theme designer you can create your own personalized theme in your company come back and refresh and you see the whole screen got changed to little blue color in the background which means the whole body become little blue which means the theme got loaded successfully and see the button also changed to now there's no yellow color coming orange color coming on highlight of the button looks a standard button of Fury application okay clear everybody 
So I guess that's about the demo. Hope you got some idea about what's my style of teaching, writing every single line of code, never doing a copy paste of code. And now I will take up, start taking up your question for next 15 minutes. So let's take up your question. The first question comes from Pavan. Unlike ABAP, we transport the object into different landscape, but UI5 using WebID, how do we do that? So we actually have an option here, right click and deploy this application directly from WebID to your ABAP system. So deploy SAP UI5 application to ABAP repository. Click on that, choose your ABAP system. So I have an S4 HANA server and I just provide my credentials for that. And now I can deploy this application to my ABAP system. And this gets deployed as a BSP application. And then I can lock it into a transport, of course, when you say next and give the name. So I say name is uh, ZDemo121. And I can now choose a package here. So which package I want to store my application in, in my ABAP system. And the moment you give a productive package over here, you would see it will pop you up for a transport request. Okay, and that transport request you you can lock your uh, you know object, and then that's it. You you are good to go ahead, and that's how then you go and release your transport, and then finally it will reach to quality and subsequent system like production. Now the question comes: if the OData service which you're using will it also work in quality? There are what about patching? If you want to just change something, what about version management? If I want to go back to the previous version, I did some mess up. If I want to go back to the previous version, all that detail is already given on my YouTube video. If you're not joining my course from tomorrow, you can go ahead with this video, how to do version management using Git repository and web IDE. What is the right path and flow to work with UI5 apps and deploy them in gateway? Okay. But if you join the training, then you would get, of course, more. You got to get complete end-to-end -end depth understanding of this whole process. But yet many of the my students have requested Anubo, can you explain what's Git? So that's why I created this video. Here is where do we do version management using Git repository. So watch out this quick video in Anubo Learning series on my website and you would get a cool idea about it. Yet again, I repeat guys, those who don't have any clue about what's going on, don't go with these videos yet. They are designed in by keeping in mind that you already taken my course and you know UI5 and Fury development. If you have not, then it's not worth to go at least with this video at this point of time. You need to know fundamentals, very important. Difference between WebDIN Pro, ABAP and UI5, as I told you earlier when we started the session, what is the advantage of using UI5? If you didn't join it earlier, maybe I'll give you the YouTube video. This is already getting recorded. So you can watch that up again on the video. The next question, so will you also include BSP application understanding how it works with BSP? No, we will not talk here BSP. I am not one of those trainer who promise you teaching S4 HANA and in training he is teaching HANA. <laughs> I'm not that kind of trainer. What I promise is what I stick to. There is very thin line of what to do, what to not. We will focus on what to do, what is right. BSP, if you want to learn, that's an old technology. There may be some other online trainings for BSP. Here, remember, it just gets deployed as a BSP application. Okay, It is not a BSP application. It gets deployed as a BSP application. That thin line you need to understand. Okay, That's very important. So ABAP on HANA or UI5. ABAP on HANA is a completely different course designed by keeping in mind ABAPOS in mind. So th that's ABAP on HANA here. You should go with this 40 or 45 hours of course for ABAP on HANA. We will not cover ABAP on HANA. Again, I repeat, I am not one of those trainers who promise you something and does cover something else. That's not the goal. You need to understand this thin line of what to learn, what to not. Those who don't have any clue, please go to YouTube, my YouTube channel. And there is a video on YouTube, my YouTube channel in my YouTube playlist where you can understand what's the right learning map for Fury. So just go to YouTube, search for Fury learning map. And here you will get an idea of what is this thin line. What is this thin line between what to do and not to do? Here I've explained complete three-tier architecture. And then I explain what is the route, what is the path for developers? What is that we're doing here? Okay, so please go through this video. You will get some idea. Now, if you ask me, ABAP on HANA is better or UI5 is better, I would say today, 
today's world both is important for an abapper okay both is important for a bapper however in this course you will get a lot of feel about abap part also where we create our data services and you will get ui part also which is our major chunk so you will become an all rounder i don't want you to just become a batsman or just become a bowler i will make you all rounder in this course you will be able to do both front end and back end stuff together okay that's my goal of this course if you ask me to get started with ui5 is better to get started rather than a bap on hana immediately choice is yours so as you said i can able to do o data and only ui front end but getting confused fear when i'm handling this model in ui5 is this course can clear things yes all the concepts related to what you do today will be clear for you model concept different variety of model why do we use them what are all the different ways to create them what is exactly uh, the different ways of binding the model all that will be clear because my focus will be writing every single line of code not doing copy paste yeah so the hope that will be clear for you okay so that's what i wanted to um, confirm now next do we have session tomorrow it starts from monday not tomorrow it's a weekday batch so we'll start from monday next is uh, i understand teaching is very well but i have a doubt are you going to teach html5 css javascript from basic i heard it will take at least 3 months to teach html5 javascript and jquery how are you going to cover it in 40 hours okay what i would say madhuri is it's a matter of experience okay some people would uh, take ui5 training and they have just knowledge on html5 css they will take 40 hours to only teach those things to you till end <laughs> and they will waste your time you will end the end say what did he teach in ui5 he just taught me html which even i can i can learn myself using w3 schools don't worry i will take you through a process which is well defined well designed and just to give you a feel about it i'll i would like to quickly show you my previously completed batch just to give you a feel uh, of how it will be you can see the session recording of my last completed batch over here and in this you can see i have covered indeed all these topics yet in 40 hours you can see html5 day 1 html5 day 2 hcss day 1 css day 2 yeah js day 1 javascript day 2 jquery and then we started after 10 session ui5 mvc ui5 sdk control hierarchy scaffolding template view types models naming models extra doubt session i also taken for students binding modes binding types xml view deep dive table control drop down formatters fragments fury objects ux list control list modes by master detail work list table fury oops a bap session which i am promising are also uploaded component js manifest router root match handler fragments custom control google map integration o data basics get operations creating transaction uh, creating o data service in gateway uh, doing crude operations using gateway association generation image processing end to end fury application web id installation everything which i'm promising you can see i was able to complete in that 40 hours you need again i repeat you need to have that thin line where to stop and what exactly to focus on if you say tomorrow you, i want to do 3d 3d image processing using html and css sorry that's not in scope because you are here to learn ui5 fury html 3d dimension modeling and 3d object creation in html yes good concept but not in scope here what you need to learn drive or draw that thin line of what to learn what is important to learn that line has to be drawn guys and that's what i will teach you where is that line where is that thin line what to cover and where to stop which will make you an expert at least in this area okay if you take the live course will we also get access to your previous batch recording no at a time only one option either you go with complete video course ask me your doubts via email post your questions on the blog or come for the next available live class for doubt or doubt clarification session but or you take it completely with the live batch daily one one class once the class is over you will get video of that class anyways okay once the class is over you will get video of that class that's that's exactly you will do so for example if i miss a class anyways i'm going to get video for that class later point of time 
what is the architecture of UI5? I will discuss that. It's MVC based architecture. Very tough to explain it in this one hour of demo session. I need to also keep track of the time. So maybe in this session we will not be able to discuss. Yeah, but of course, uh, in the upcoming days when we start MVC, we will talk about it in detail. Okay, I have seen a map on HANA as uh, complementary in this course. No, I don't think so. Just send me a screenshot on my mail where exactly you're seeing it as a complementary ABAP on HANA with UI5. It's a completely different course on my website, 40 hour duration. Saheli, she is part of now this UI5 training. She has already attended this course. Uh, you can you can ask the feedback. Saheli, if you can unmute your line and explain what was the feedback uh, of ABAP on HANA training which you had attended with me last, last, uh, last month. Sahil, are you there? Yeah, hi. So it was very informative and very helpful to understand the concepts even for newbies, basically. And also you can uh, help yourself understand how to navigate and how to process as well. If you have no idea about um, how to work with the HANA Studio, if you have no idea about what serious views are, so this is very helpful and very informative course. Thank you. What is my feedback? Thank okay, so that's why she she is now on rolling for UI5. So first she has taken a BAP on HANA and now she's enrolling for UI5 because she see that for an ABAPer now these these things are becoming a need. It's not like you know chalta hai attitude. Uh, now you have to change yourself, guys. You got to learn these new things if you really want to survive. Survival is a question now because things are moving quite fast in industry. And you're finding it so difficult to cope up with the pace of industry. Your colleagues are beating you in the market. Your colleagues are getting new opportunities and projects, and you're sitting and watching them. You are talking a lot in cafeteria with a lot of people. You are seeking, seeking, but you're not taking action. Time for action, guys, if you want to change the world for yourself. Nobody will come and change it. You got to change it yourself. So it's time to switch i am not saying take my course but at least give some time to your learning those who have already some idea anyways i am giving a lot of free content on youtube that's my commitment to the community because i get a lot of love from from these you, my youtube channel from a lot of emails i get across the globe from people asking anuba we love your video we like your content give us more we want to understand this this is the problem i'm facing my student come with a lot of questions which i could not touch upon in my training and that's my commitment only what i do i do it for you for my students those who've taken the course they are finding it difficult for something i create a youtube video for them and put it in an about learning series here for them okay okay can drop me the deed uh, you can drop me an email guys for the details when the batch is commencing when we are starting the link the blog access everything i will share with you you know my gmail id it's anubar.abapa.gmail.com just drop me an email after the demo session i will get you all the steps to enroll finally and then get started from monday all the details will be reaching in your email email box accordingly those who are already attending my video based course and now planning to switch to this live course for them, I would like to tell you that from Monday, or I already sent out the meeting request to for all of you, a recurring meeting request right from Monday. You guys all will be joining the session. You also get the blog access for today uh, for this new training uh, training course blog uh, from today, and the old blog access will stop, which has the videos. Uh, so you will be able to attend regular classes, and after that, videos will come up. For these classes i'm new to abap should i learn basic abap before starting abap on hana i would say don't go with abap on hana at the point if you are new to sap area and you want to make a career start with ui5 which is easy relatively for you to get started you get gel up and there are a lot of requirements on ui5 in the industry at this point of time the schedule i have already shared once again i'll just quickly show you guys this is the schedule of Yes, Mahesh. So thank you so much for joining the demo class. You all know my email ID. You can reach me. Please do write me your feedback on my YouTube channel. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more interesting videos. And thank you so much for watching this demo session. Have a nice day and goodbye.